yes. So, <coughs> do we need to turn this on? Do we need to do something? From you think so, right? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure. The last time I was here, it was maybe five or six years ago. I was doing a master thesis project with Don Zagé, which was a great experience. I learned a lot from him, but shamefully, on my part, nothing about the Grosagé formula. So uh, I felt before coming here, I should learn something before coming here again. So uh, this is some of what I learned. Uh, so I'm going to start. Okay, I'll tell you the setup. Then I will specialize to. So the what I'm going to consider are is an abelian variety, uh, simple abelian variety uh, of GL2 type. <coughs> I'm going to tell you what this means over F, which is going to be a sort of the real field. So GL2 type means <coughs> that uh, the endomorphism algebra of A is, well, in this case, a field of dimension equal to the dimension of A. So the reason why we are interested in these kind of abelian varieties is that they are, uh, in some sense, the next simplest case after elliptic curves. Uh, for example, I mean, that's so you can look, view the Tate module as essentially of dimension two in the sense that over the field um, of endomorphism of A. Uh, so in particular, something which is very important for the arithmetic, for the study of the arithmetic of abelian varieties is uh, some relation between them and automorphic objects. So the conjecture <laughs> is in this case that A is um, attached Okay, let me write it in a more precise way. So the Galois representation associated to A is isomorphic to the Galois representation associated to F for, uh, for some uh, Hilbert modular form. I can form F. Uh, so this means associated to the group GL2 over F of parallel weight 2. <coughs> so this is so this is known uh, if A is an elliptic curve and F equals Q by the work of Wiles and others. And nowadays I think for all real quadratic fields also. Um, and this is wor recent work of, uh, okay, I'm not sure I can read the second part of his name from the notes. <coughs> I have something like this, probably Hong Bao, um, <coughs> for real quadratic field. Okay, so, so uh, for simplicity in this talk, uh, I'm going to assume that A is an elliptic curve, which will just simplify the notation uh, a, a few points. So what we are interested in understanding is a group of rational points of E. So this is a torsion group plus uh, R copies of Z to the R. So R is called the rank of A, as you know. Uh, so something which is slightly easier that you can construct from local data is the L function of A uh, of A. It's a function of a complex vari uh, variable S, and it has uh, uh, ramified Euler factors given by um, so uh, so if you write A P equals to uh, norm of P plus one minus the size of A of FP, or P a prime of F, then uh, <coughs> so the P part of the other factor, is, so the P part of this L function is given by 1 minus AP 
norm of p to the minus s plus norm of p to the 1 minus 2s inverse. So you take the product of all p's of something like this, uh, at least for good primes. And uh, that's going to be well defined for uh, or convergent for s uh, big large enough or real parts of s large enough. And the conjecture is uh, that L A S uh, continues to uh, an entire function of S, and it has, should meet the functional equation relating the values at S to the values at 2 minus S. Okay, so that's a preliminary for the conjecture of Birgen Swinter Dyer, so <coughs> which has two parts. Uh, so there is a rank part uh, which says that uh, the order of vanishing of this little function at 1 is equal to the rank of A. And then there is a second part, which is a formula for uh, the leading term of L A at 1. So actually this had a preliminary, uh, namely the existence of L at one, here I also need a preliminary conjecture, which is, I mean, as probably even harder than the conjecture itself, which is that uh, the order of detection for every group of A is finite. So, detection for every group of A is finite, uh, and um, the leading term of A is given by this product of numbers that I'm going to define for you. So here I have the discriminant of f to the minus a half times um, the regulator of the height pairing on A times uh, a product of the Magawa numbers mm -hmm. and times uh, the size of Sha. So these numbers are 1 unless D divides the conductor of A uh, and I should tell you so Sha is uh, the Tatra Borovich group. I'm not going to define it because I don't have time, but you, and also because you know about it. Uh, so omega A is, uh, so if you pretend that there exists uh, a global neuron differential, omega A, then what you do is uh, for each uh, infinite place of F, you integrate over the real points of f at that infinite place, of a at that infinite place, you integrate omega a. <coughs> and uh, the regulator is uh, the discriminant of the height pairing. So we have uh, the usual neuron height height pairing, uh, which has values in the real numbers. And so the regulator is the discriminant uh, of it, so it's uh, more precisely, it's you take the determinant of xi, xj, where xi is any basis of a of f tends to q, and you divide by the index. Square, so that's independent of the basis. Okay, so the case I'm going to be interested in is, in, is the case of uh, rank one. So when, and I'm going to start from the left, so when the order of vanishing is one. So in that case, we expect the rank of A to be one, and uh, we would like to construct a point for, uh, in order to do that. Okay, so I should say that, I mean, this conjecture here uh, follows from modularity, and basically that's the only way of, known way of proving the conjecture. <coughs> okay, so
Okay, so so we, for constructing points, we need a slightly stronger version of modularity, namely uh, that uh, our abelian variety is in parameterized by a Shimura curve, so that it occurs in the uh, quotient of the Jacobian of Shimura curve. So um, this is not always the case, even if you know modularity. For example, the, there are some uh, unlucky cases. So I'm, I'm probably going to tell you a little more in a second. Um, so assume, um, so let's say that N is a conductor of uh, A. Um, and choose S, a finite set of places V dividing N. Uh, so, and I want the size of S to be congruent to uh, G modulo 2. So G is the degree of S. So we can imagine that this is not always uh, possible. Maybe G, yeah, actually G minus 1. Uh, so, so if I do that, then uh, for each infinite place tau of f, uh, there exists a quaternion algebra V of tau over f, which has the following invariant. So I have to tell you what it looks like at every place p. So this is going to be uh, is uh, ramified <coughs> exactly at the places v in S and uh, v dividing infinity be different from tau. So associated to this uh, uh, quaternion algebra, I have, okay, I can choose an either order R of discriminant N in V of tau, and then I get X, which is going to be an algebraic uh, curve over F, whose complex points for each embedding tau are given by Uh, this quotient of the upper half plane. So maybe I will write here. So since the, uh, all I'm doing here is generalizing the setup of Gross and Zagier, I will, uh, for convenience, uh, what the classical situation is. So in the classic, so you should think of uh, x as a, uh, as a generalization of the modular curve. So in the classical case, f would be q. Uh, the set S would be empty. And x would be um, x0 of n. OK, so I want to construct points. So, so, so the, the assumption that I'm going to make is that so in the classical case, uh, what Wiles tells you is that there is a parameterization from x0 of n to uh, any given elliptic curve of conductor n over q. So I'm going to assume that uh, <coughs> So I, I'm going to actually start from x and uh, do the following. So I take, uh, so assume that uh, a is a quotient of uh, Jx, okay, so this is going to be the Bonese variety of x. <coughs> so if I have this, uh, if I'm in this situation, then from algebraic or rational points on p, on x, uh, I will be able to construct points on uh, a. So you have some yeah, exactly, so. Yeah, so this assumption is not, uh, can, uh, there, is, uh, there are cases where the assumption can never be satisfied. So the case, so this, uh, uh, so 
can't be satisfied. Uh, for example, in some unlucky cases, which are actually not going to uh, be of concern to us later, but uh, the unlucky cases would be when f over q is even and n is a square, for example. Okay, so the points are going to come from uh, CM points on the humor curve. Okay, I'm not very efficient with this, but. Okay, so we so we need to choose uh, E, which is going to be a CM extension of F. So this means it has degree two and it's totally imaginary. And we will choose P, a point uh, on X fixed by E star. So I fix not only E but an embedding of E into the adults into sorry into B, well, let's say, B. yeah, G tau for each tau. Okay, so so the points of X, so so X has an action by the Hecke algebra, so quaternionic Hecke algebra. So in particular, it has an action also by E via this embedding, and the points fixed by the by this uh, action are called CM points. Called the CM point. So uh, the theory of complex multiplication uh, tells that P is uh, defined. So if I choose it suitably, the best I can do is it have it defined over the Hilbert class field H over E. So H of E. Okay, so I have my uh, Shimura curve X, uh, and I have a point P, a rational point P on it. Then here I have Albanese variety of X, and I have A, which is its isogeny quotient. So I can map P down to A, except that I need an embedding from X to the Jacobian. So this embedding in the classical case is given by. Uh, uh -huh, okay. So I should tell you that in general there are cusps, but actually the only case in which you do have cusps this classical case. So in this case, um, what I do have is uh, I can embed x into jx by sending p, for example, to p minus 0, where 0 is a cusp, or the cusp infinity. In general, you will not have cusp, but what you will have is a canonical divisor of degree 1, so called the Hodge class. So actually, this will lie in, it will not be, uh, I mean, it, it's a divisor up to tensoring with Q, and you can normalize it so that it has degree 1. Then the embedding, actually, this embedding is uh, only a quasi-embedding, so I mean, it's a, mul a rational multiple of it will be a morphism, and I send P to, uh, I call it I, so I of P will be called Z, that's uh, the class of P, uh, minus C, and I map it down to something which I'm going to call ZF because A is associated to F. Actually, maybe uh, what I want to do is first trace C down to, okay, so Z is going to be uh, the trace from H to E of P, of uh, I of P. Okay, so I have uh, yeah. Okay, so Z will be in A, uh, in AF, 
of E. So what we want to determine is whether this point that we have constructed uh, is non-torsion. So I'm going to make an assumption which is actually necessary for uh, the point to be non-torsion and it also, it also excludes, uh, excludes the unlucky case. So the assumption is going to be that uh, all, um, so, okay, this is not essential but I'm going to assume that uh, delta, the discriminant, uh, of E over F is prime to N, so these are both ideals in OF. So I'm going to assume that these are co-prime. And uh, I'm also going to assume the following. So if epsilon denotes the quadratic character of E, then I'm going to assume that epsilon of N is equal to minus one to the power of G minus one. And then I'm going to tell you what S is. So S will be, uh, which is a finite set of places that I use to construct my quaternion algebra B. S is going to be um, the set of B dividing N such that uh, epsilon B of N equals negative one. Okay, so in the case of Gross and Zagier, this set S is empty and this means that, uh, so what they assume is that all V dividing N are split in uh, E. Okay, so under this condition, we can relate this, uh, uh, the height uh, of this Hegner point to a derivative uh, of an uh, L-series. So the L-series will be uh, the Rankine-Salberg L-series, uh, which appeared in the previous talk as well, uh, except, uh, yeah. So I'm going to consider in the notation of the previous talk, L of F tensor theta, and more generally theta of chi, uh, S, so theta of chi will be a form of weight one, so this will be, um, uh, so this has weight two, this has weight one, so the center will, is going to be at S equals one. And theta of chi uh, is given as follows, so chi is a character of <coughs> the Galois group of E, uh, finite order, let's say. And um, what I'm going to assume is, um, so I'm going to consider this uh, the classical theory also as a character of ideals of E and also as a character of, uh, I mean, classes, also as a character of the finite, of the ideal of E. So theta of chi is going to be a sum over all ideals uh, in OE of, uh, sorry, so it's going to be sum over N of uh, something times Q to the N, and the coefficients are going to be, uh, say, R chi of N, so R chi of N will be the sum over all ideals B in OE uh, whose norm is N, for each one of those ideals, I'm going to take chi of B. Okay, so right now I'm going to be interested uh, in the special case where chi is one. Okay, maybe before raising the board, I should say that this, uh, so uh, <coughs> this is defined uh, for a real part of S large enough uh, by some uh, Dirichlet series, but you can extend it to all uh, values of S and it satisfies a functional equation relating its values at S to the values at two minus S and the functional equation has a sign and the sign is uh, epsilon 
of n times minus 1 to the power of g. So I'm going to put myself in the condition where the sign is negative one. So that is the necessary condition for the Hagner point not to vanish. Uh, and that also implies that uh, the special value at the center of uh, at the center of this L function is zero. So, so assume that epsilon of n is equal to minus 1 to the power of g minus 1. Then the theorem, uh, which is due to Rosen-Zagier in the case. What? Break the chalk. I will break the chalk. OK. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I know that squeaking of chalk is not a really pleasant sound. Um, so this is due to Rosen-Zagier in, in that case, and it's due to uh, Zhang in the case I'm going to. Uh, I'm putting myself now here. So uh, in this case, I have that L of F uh, tensor theta of 1 at 1 is equal to 0. And uh, the derivative of this uh, L series at the point equal to 1 is, is equal to the following. So you divide by a suitable period. So this is. Uh, 8 pi squared to the power of g times the Peter Sainter product of f with itself. And up to a suitable constant, this is equal, so this is a, an elementary algebraic constant. This is going to be equal to uh, the height bearing <coughs> of this Hegner point with itself. So what they can deduce from this is that uh, if uh, <coughs> the order A vanishing of the L series of A is 1, uh, then uh, uh, the rank of A of F is at least 1. And actually, it's equal to 1 if you further use the work of Kolivagin. Uh, but you should notice that here, the L function that I use is not exactly the L function of A. Uh, it's the L function of the base change of A to some uh, extension. So, uh, so what I should say is that This L function here uh, factors as the product of the L function of f comma s. That's the same by modularity as the L function of a twisted by s times the L function of a twist of f by this character epsilon of s. So you can choose uh, the quadratic field E so that you had a question? Yes. So it's the 8 pi squared to the power of g. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then it times the Peterson product of f with itself. Um, so, so you can put yourself in a situation where uh, the vanishing, uh, so you have uh, L of a s vanishes to order 1, and this, uh, so this vanishing to order 1, and this vanishes to order 0, namely it does not vanish. So that here you have vanishing of order one, and then uh, you get uh, you get the corollary that I said here, and then the method of Kolivagin actually uh, allows you to say that this point that you found the f is a generator of the uh, Bordelais group of A. Um, also, and chart. Okay, so, but actually BSD has another part, which is the formula part. 
So what does this say about the BSD formula? Uh, so. so what you can do is look at um, So you can look at, uh, so, so this, this essentially is going to be the regulator because it's a, uh, it's a point on A and actually under this condition it's not on A of E but it's actually on A of F at least up to tensoring with Q. And then you can look at this side. So in, at this side at least up to rational numbers you should have um, the leading term of the L function of A. So. So I'm going to write, uh, okay, well, let's stick with this notation. So you can write this as uh, L prime of F comma one times L prime of F epsilon, L F epsilon comma one, assuming that this, so choosing that, so that epsilon, so that this is non zero. And then you divide by, uh, so you can factor this period as omega F plus times omega F minus um, so this will be the discriminant of, um, of this pairing. So you take essentially pi calls on the Hilbert modular variety of level n um, with Q coefficients. You take the uh, part which is uh, given, uh, so the eigen part uh, where a complex conjugation acts uh, but all the complex conjugations act by plus one. So this pairs with forms uh, in S2 of gamma zero of n. And uh, so there is a pairing valued in C given by integration when you view these forms as differential forms. So you can tra take uh, the F block of this pairing. So you have an action of the Heck algebra on each side and you, get to this, uh, and you look at the discriminant of this. So that is uh, a period. So the product of these two periods will be omega f. Uh, and by, so we know that uh, this part here is known to be algebraic and if you're careful enough you can control over what field it lies. So now you're interested in, uh, in this part and uh, in particular, you would like to identify, so L of Fs is identified with L of As. Uh, so now an extra difficulty which comes up in this case is that it's not obvious that uh, omega F um, plus is the same as the uh, neuron uh, period appearing in BSD. Uh, so, so the reason is that here you have something uh, on the Hilbert modular variety, whereas what you uh, did to parameterize your, ellip your elliptic curve is go through a Shimura variety. So in this case, uh, in the classical case, you have that omega f plus is the same as omega f, at least in modular algebraic numbers, whereas uh, Whereas in the general case, that's a conjecture. So essentially, it's a conjecture relating a, a specific period with an automorphic period. Uh, but in fact, you can phrase it purely in terms of uh, automorphic periods. So the conjecture in this case would be that uh, omega A appearing in BSD is the same as omega F. So this is going to be always mean like in C star modular algebraic numbers or C star modular rationals, uh, if you're careful. Um, plus, so in fact, this omega A is seen to be from the, from what you have seen uh, when I defined it, is the product of omega F. Uh, so you transfer F by Jekyll and Anglands to, um, 
to the Shimura curve associated with B of tau, and you take the same kind of discriminant. So, so the what you're so the conjecture is actually a relation between uh, periods of a form uh, of, of a Hilbert modular form and its transfers to different uh, quaternion algebras. Okay, so this is essentially a conjecture of Shimura. Um, so it's non-trivial even if, if f is equal to q because you, then you transfer to different uh, to, from modular curves to different quaternion algebra. But in that case, it's known. Uh, uh, due to Shimura itself, and uh, there is more precise work of Prasanna on this. And it's also known if A has CM, and this is work of this. <coughs> However, if you assume the conjecture, so assuming the conjecture, then uh, you get that the BSD <coughs> formula is true, okay? <coughs> is uh, true up to uh, an algebraic or, if you're careful enough, rational number. Okay, so what I'm going to uh, tell you now is what I'm going to come to the title of the talk. So the piade grosse formula, that is one of the application of it is uh, uh, allowing you to say something about P integrality properties in the BSD formula, okay? So, you, <coughs> of course, in order to even start, you need to, um, you need to have, uh, to consider P integrality properties of an algebraic number, otherwise things don't quite make sense. Um, so, the Piatic analog will be, uh, okay, the Piatic analog will be, uh, relating the piadic height of Hegner points with the derivative of a piadic uh, rankin selberg L function. So I should tell you what each of the two things is. So first I should tell you about piadic heights, and I don't need to tell you that much because you have heard the Besser's talk on it. So I'm going to recall that you have a pairing which I'm going to denote like this, but which looks like the height, uh, the classical height pairing. I'm going to decorate it in a second so that uh, it doesn't look exactly the same. So it's going to be from A, F, or some extension of F with values in QP. And uh, so it's a sum of uh, local symbols, and it depends on two choices. So it depends on choices. So the first one, which is uh, uh, <coughs> not so crucial, but I mean, it's a choice, uh, and it's important, uh, which is that uh, you take some analog of uh, the classical logarithm. Okay, so, so essentially, the piadic height will be given at uh, places not dividing p by an intersection number on the risk of closure times, well, in the classical case, it's given by times log p. In this case, it is <coughs> times L of a uniformizer of p. So you get a piadic number. And the second choice on which it depends is uh, for each uh, v dividing p, <coughs> a splitting of uh, the Hodge filtration on H1, uh, the RAM of A over FD. So now I'm going to fix a prime P, which is uh, co prime to N and delta. And uh, for, the, for later purposes, I mean, not so much later, I'm going to assume that all uh, B dividing P are split in my field E. And then um, what you, the choice of splitting, so depends, uh, it's going to be the following. So the, we call this splitting WV. So WV will be associated to alpha V. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to put it here. So W alpha V will be the part of H1 the RAM where Frobenius at B acts by alpha V and alpha V is going to be a root of the V factor polynomial <coughs> of uh, A. So it's in the same the, uh, the same thing that appeared in Bertolini's talk, except that I'm not going to assume that A is ordinary at P. So when A is ordinary at P, you're, you're you will choose uh, you can choose a unit root splitting, and in fact that's the only thing that I am going to allow in that case. And when the uh, when A is super singular, I'm going to allow any root. Okay, so I'm going, just going to write uh, non-critical. Okay, so this means that VP of alpha P should be less than VP of the normal P. Okay, so, so this pairing is, is going to have an alpha here. And technically I should also put an L, but uh, I will not. Then the second ingredient is going to be uh, a periodical function. So that will not be much different from the periodical function which appeared in the previous talk. Sorry? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, in this case, I'm. Uh, I'm going to say, so I mean, in this case, it's an elliptic curve, so it's, oh, uh, yeah. But if it's an abelian right, it's a GL2 type, so still, uh, yeah, okay, the same as an elliptic curve, and then otherwise we can think about it later. Okay, so the oh, so I should mention the most important property of periodic height, which is a negative property, which is that uh, we don't know that this is non-vanishing. Okay, so for all we know, except of course that you can compute it, uh, it could be identically zero. So it's only known uh, it's only known uh, for uh, CM elliptic curves. By work of Dr. <coughs> okay, so the second ingredient is a periodical function. So what you can do is look at uh, these values, L of F. Uh, tensor theta chi evaluated at one. And now if you restrict to characters chi of uh, this group G with values in Q bar star, so G is going to be the Galois group of the uh, maximal uh, ZP extension of E, which is unramified outside P. So if you look at these values, well, these are <coughs> transcendental, as we saw before, but if we divide by these periods omega f, then, uh, and if we take out a suitable factor which depends on alpha, then this as a function of chi extends to a rigid uh, analytic function of 
on uh, on a certain rigid space. So why is the space uh, take an epiadic field? Its values are its points. There are continuous homomorphisms from um, G to L star. And I realize that if I'm bending too much, it means that people in the back cannot see. OK, so I should call this a theorem. Uh, <coughs> so this is due to Perrin uh, Ryu in the case, uh, so in the case that I call the classical case. And uh, very generally for total real fields, in the ordinary case, it's due to Kranchishkin uh, and Hida. And uh, in the non-ordinary case, well, I wrote it down, then there is also a more very general version of, uh, of Bang. Actually, well, a field for F, F equals Q at the moment. Uh, so, so in this case, the, the variables are chi. So how big is this Galois group? This is isomorphic to Zp to the 1 plus delta plus G. And if you believe the Leopold conjecture, delta is always 0. So it's uh, essentially two variables, if you think in of the case of F equals Q. Uh, and then you could think of adding a third variable, and that's, uh, that's actually important in general if you want to factor this theoretical function into a product of standard L function, theoretical functions like we did in the previous case. Okay, so the rigid analytic function is going to be named LP uh, alpha of Fe, and then I'm going to denote the values as chi like this. And then the theorem, uh, this is, which is due to Perrin Ryu uh, and Kobayashi in the case of F equals Q, uh, is that uh, if, again, epsilon n is equal to minus 1 to the g minus 1, then um, again, here there's a functional equation uh, which relates the values at chi to the values at chi uh, conjugate inverse. So conjugate because this Galois group is the hedral. And um, I mean, the Galois group, uh, yes. And, um, and the sign is the same. OK, so, so in this case, you evaluate at the trivial character then again, by the functional equation, you should get identically zero. In fact, you get identically zero if you evaluate at any anti-cyclotomic character. So any character which, uh, yeah, any anti-cyclotomic character, which is the opposite case of cyclotomic characters. So cyclotomic characters <coughs> means that it factors through the analog Galois group for F. Okay, so that is the only interesting case. And in that interesting case, or I mean in general, but in general you get zero equals zero, you get that uh, the periodic height pairing of uh, Vf with itself associated to this uh, split, hot splitting alpha is equal uh, up to the same constant C to Lp alpha prime of Fp at 1. And actually, what does its derivative mean? This means that you take d over ds of this times chi to the power of s, uh, and evaluate at s equals 0. So s is a periodic variable here. And uh, so, so chi, in this case, will be a, an infinite order periodic character. And uh, so I, I told you that I was not going to put l here, but this did depend on a periodic logarithm l. This depends on the direction in which you take the derivative. Um, and l is associated to chi. OK, so from this, uh, you get as a corollary periodic analogs of the corollaries of Ross and Taguier, if you happen to be interested in, in those. Uh, so you get um, periodic BSD, the rank part, 
uh, if the sort of order of vanishing at the trivial character of L A chi is one. So this is a this would be a standard theoretical function. So this in, this would be a, a theoretical function interpolating um, the special values of L A uh, chi. Okay, so this has degree two, and this has degree four. Assuming that you have a factorization, which is not always uh, trivial, so it's it's easy in the ordinary case. In the non-ordinary case, it's uh, less easy. And actually, maybe this is not even constructed in all cases in the non-ordinary case. Um, so this is about periodic BSD. So the periodic BSD formula, you can guess the formulation. It says that uh, this order of vanishing, uh, when P does not divide the conductor, otherwise the formulation is a bit different, is equal to the rank of, um, of A. And then... Uh, And assuming the conjecture, um, so again, you get a, um, a periodic BSD formula after rational number, as assuming uh, this conjecture on periods. But now the interest of the of this formula is that you can use it to relate, uh, okay, I forgot to add water to this. So you can use this uh, to relate the classical uh, Greta Gay formula. Okay, I can, I can to relate four things that I have to write on the board because I cannot, uh, I need a two dimensional picture, then I can only talk in one dimension. Uh, So the situation is the following. So um, you might be interested in looking at the BSD formula. Uh, so that tells you that uh, special value of A at 1 divided by the period of A is equal to, and the regulator, I'm going to put myself in the case of rank, uh, so order of vanishing equal to 1. Um, so this tells you that uh, so now this th that this is a, an algebraic number and it tells you that this is equal to the order of the stage of Ravitch group and this is something that we don't know. And something that we also don't know is the periodic BSD formula, which will tell you that uh, if you look at the periodical function of A divided by a regulator of a periodic height pairing, and uh, well here I don't have to put the period because that was already appeared in, in the interpolation. So this will tell you that this, up to an Euler factor that you have removed and you should put back in, so I'm going to put a dot here, is essentially the order of the Tejshev Ravitch group. But, and, but now what you do know, thanks to the gross gay formula, is that uh, this same number is essentially equal to the index of the Hegner point on um, in uh, in A of f, so it generates. So the Hegner point is a generator for A of f tensor Q, but it could be uh, a multiple of the generator of, for of A of f, the non-torsion part, as a Z module. So this is uh, what you can deduce from the Gauss-Gay formula, which is the square of this. Um, and now the periodic gross gate formula tells you it implies uh, something similar. So now I'm dividing by the regulator, so I'm also assuming that the height pairing is non-trivial, but uh, or non-vanishing. But I mean, you can you know, figure out a statement where you do a proportion and not a, di a division. Uh, okay, so I'm going to write Hegner index here. So now the BSD formula, at least the, the P part of the BSD formula, so the equality of periodic valuations of these 
uh, two periodic numbers is reduced to uh, this equality. Uh, so thanks to the growth of formula is reduced to this equality of these two rational numbers. So that's equivalent to the equality of, of these two rational numbers. And uh, why is it useful to go from here to the periodic version of PST? Well, um, it is useful because the periodic version is a little bit easier in the sense that there, are, uh, there is a result, and now maybe I should not write it too low. So there is a result of uh, Schneider for ordinary case and for U in general, which gives you um, a strategy towards it. Okay, so the theorem is of uh, Schneider and Perron U uh, is that uh, if uh, the order of the Tate Shafravich group of A, so this is quite general, this is fine, if the order of the Tate Shafravich group of A is finite and uh, uh, the periodic height pairing is non degenerate, then uh, the periodic, the, so the periodic version of the BSD formula up to a periodic unit is implied by, it was our main conjecture, which is certainly also hard, but uh, it's known in some cases, so there is lots of progress on it. Uh, so it's known for most elliptic curves over Q by Scato and Skinner Oban. And there's work in progress uh, for higher cases for, uh, so for F there is work in progress by Shin Wen. Um, so now you have a strategy to prove periodic BSD, and this and this gives you a way of uh, a bridge from this from the periodic world to the classical world. So I should say that this is not the only strategy. More so th this strategy goes back to uh, the work of Ferrand Yu, uh, and actually there is more recently. Uh, uh, so very recently, like this year, other strategies towards the same result. So for uh, the periodic part of BSD and rank one uh, were proposed by uh, Wei Zhang and uh, Xin Wan himself using a different uh, version of the was our main conjecture. <laughs> um, okay, so I think I'm going to stop here. Maybe one thing that I should say is that uh, since the title of this trimester program is our Achilles theory one, so I didn't say anything about the proof, I realized. I mean, uh, so, so one way, one uh, thing that you have to do in the proof, which is different from the classical case, is uh, so you have to sort of compute these intersections of, of these guys. And um, so what you would like to do is actually compute intersections of things of, from PP, where this is a CM point, and then uh, separate this from things like C comma T and C comma T. So in order to do that, the periodic height pairing is only defined for divisors of degree zero. So you have to use uh, periodic or Kellogg theory in order to use, uh, in order to uh, sort of separate this pairing into, into, into components in, uh, involving divisors of degree non-zero. Yeah, I also I also assumed that. Yeah, although w so if you if you know that the um, the height pairing is non-zero, then what you can do is sort of prove the same formula for places with, for uh, removing that condition by just uh, I mean just using a different imaginary quadratic field and then multiplying. Okay, so 
I, I, I think you get what I mean. It's a, it's, a, it's a tricky version of the proof. So you prove it a posteriori without really proving an equality, but you, you, you use a different uh, quadratic field and then you go down. Yeah. Oh. No, so he I mean he's doing both things, so, but but he, but he's so so this is uh, uh, yes, but but the other strategy that he's proposing is um, <laughs> while using a, a different uh, it was our main conjecture. So for something for a theoretical function related to your work with uh, Darmon and Prasanna. Yeah. So for a, for a slightly different Selmer group. And I think that uh, has some advantages in the sense that uh, the periods that appear are theta periods of theta series, so you don't get into these problems with periods and probably don't even have to use theodic heights. Although, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard about it a few weeks ago, so I don't know any details. And actually, I should say, so sorry, I, I claimed more than I can prove. So I should say that if alpha uh, it's not zero, so for, for, for the places which are non, at which alpha is non order I, should, I need to assume that FV is just uh, QP. Uh, yeah, so that's unfortunate, but it's uh, something related to the theory of normal systems, which doesn't quite work in that case. 